We're back with our friend Bob Holmes again, and we're going to talk about that all-important subject of lighting. Hey, Bob, what are some practical steps for learning to see light and work with light? I think the best advice I can give is to take a lot of photographs. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you have to know how your camera works and how it responds to light. You know, know what the dynamic range of the, the sensor is, how much you're going to record in the dark areas, how much you're going to record in the highlights. Learn to use a histogram. I use a histogram continually. Um, I'm always checking the histogram to make sure that I'm getting the correct exposure for what I'm trying to interpret. Um, there's no real such thing as a correct exposure. There's an ideal exposure technically, but the correct exposure is the one that enables you to interpret the scene the way you want to interpret it. So that's the best way to learn about light. Learn how the camera's going to record it. And then just immerse yourself in, I'm continually looking at um, light falling on things, or I'm looking at people, whatever. You know, the first thing I look at is how the light is affecting me. And the other thing to do is look at other mediums that use light, painting, for example, particularly, not a, a school of painting I'm particularly interested in, but the classical painters, you know, they use light incredibly. The Rembrandt, Vermeer, um, they're all great interpreters of light. And you can learn a lot from that and question it. Ask yourself where the light's coming from, why it's working in that way, and just immerse yourself in the subject. Is there some secret sauce for how you interpret a histogram? There are no secrets in photography. I'm always surprised when photographers are very protective about what they do and secretive about what they do. I think it's so pointless. Everything's been done more or less in photography. There are no secrets. The secret is learning to see and you just have to put the time in. And again, it comes back to taking a lot of photographs and analyze what you've taken. Bob, we have a question from ISO Magazine. Can you elaborate on the three phases or stages of seeing a photograph? There are three stages you go through. When you start taking photographs, you see something, take a photograph of it, and look at it back in, in on your laptop or whatever and realize it's a, a good photograph. The second stage is when you look through the camera and realize it's a good photograph. And the third stage is when you don't even have to look through the camera and recognize it's going to be a good photograph. And that's the stage we're all aiming for, when it becomes intuitive and you see something and know immediately it's going to be a great shot. That's what we're all striving for. And that only comes with practice, lots and lots of practice. But you should all be striving for that. No, it's, it's not rocket science, but it involves a lot of work. The, the problem with photography particularly these days with digital photography, it's all so deceptively simple. Um, anybody can take a decent photograph. It's, it's not hard. Um, and it lulls people into a sense that they don't need to put any effort into it. But that isn't true. You still have to work at it, still have to practice, still have to learn what your camera will do. If you're ever going to get beyond just taking the odd lucky shot, I'm digressing a little bit, but I used to be very critical of people that said, you know, there's one quite well-known uh, personality of the photographer that always says, and now finish it in Photoshop. And that really used to irritate me. You know, finish yeah. in Photoshop. You should finish it in the camera. Now, you should be in control. But the, the reality is, you know, I've changed my standpoint on that a little bit. The the reality is that the the raw file is really like a negative, and you have to interpret that. I'm not quite as irritated as I used to be by the finishing Photoshop uh, comments. Although I still try to do it in camera, I try to get the image in camera as close to what I want as possible, and then tweak it later if I have to. But um, sitting in front of the computer just drives me crazy. Bob, are there any new tricks or tips regarding lighting or lighting equipment that you've picked up? I've just got a Profoto A1 strobe, which is phenomenal. It's mm. a little, it's a small um, strobe like any of the on-camera strobes. 
but far, far more powerful, huge power. Um, as I say, it's made by a photo, about $1,000, very versatile, and accessories for modifying the light. You can get grids for them, snoops, all kinds of things. And I don't use it a lot, but there are certain situations where you have to, when it's just too dark or the quality of light isn't quite right. You know, I'm a natural light photographer, so it's unusual for me to be excited by something like that. But Under what circumstances would you pull out that strobe? As, as you know, I do a lot of work in wineries. So yeah. if I was in a barrel room or in a cave or whatever, I might need a bit of supplemental lighting. But the way I, the way I use it, you wouldn't even know I was using a strobe because I try to replicate what little natural light there is and just intensify it. I don't, awesome. use, I don't use it to illuminate a subject directly. I use them as subtly as possible. I don't like shots that look as though they've been lit by a strobe. The week after so, next, actually, I'm, I'm taking, I've got to take a, a, some portraits and a, a big group of people, and I'll be using a big um, pro photo, I think it's a B, the B1, which is a, a low, it's a battery powered big strobe, studio strobe, which I use in the field with an umbrella or whatever. And that's remarkable. Um, but it's a different look. It's not what I normally do. I'm just doing it because the client needs it. Um, so I, I embrace everything. As a professional, you have to. Um, I don't necessarily enjoy doing it, but uh, occasionally I have to. Any other tips, Bob, for learning to see light? You often hear that the light isn't good enough to go out shooting, that it's bad light. I don't believe there is such a thing as bad light. For a photographer, any light is good. What we have occasionally is inappropriate light. You know, if you're shooting landscapes, you really want, you know, everybody says you shoot in the golden hour, either the early golden hour around dawn or the late golden hour around sunset. Um, actually, I equally like very stormy weather, even in the middle of the day. If there are dark skies and storms and the sun bursting through, to me, that's often better than the golden light. Um, but the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that there is no bad light. Now, as a travel photographer, I'm often in places where um, I have to shoot. You know, we don't have the luxury. In the early days, in the 80s, I'd shoot for National Geographic and I'd be on the road for three months, four months. And that's a lot of time to wait for things to happen. You know, more recently, those assignments have dropped down to as little as a week. And you have to shoot every minute to get the coverage. So you can't wait around for, for beautiful light to happen. So if the light is bad for one thing, or in, I should have been falling into my own uh, criticism. If it's inappropriate for one thing, it can be appropriate for something else. If it's overcast and cloudy, it can be great for people shots. You don't get harsh shadows on people's faces. Um, I do interiors. If, if it's raining, go and do interiors. And I even like shooting in the rain. It can be beautiful. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is there is, no, there is no bad light. Just make sure you shoot in the light that's appropriate for the subject you're shooting. And that's something you have to learn through practice again, using your camera knowing how your camera's going to react to those lighting conditions. Hey, Bob, thanks for joining us again. We love having you on the show. We love having you guys join us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss any of our new episodes. We love it when you like us, when you share, and be sure to leave your comments. Bob and I will both see them. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.